It doesn't really tell you how to open the door, just that you need to do it. Now, power up is a separate menu that I'm gonna go over in a little bit. Because we can't really do much with it at the moment. What I can explain though is shooting. It's pretty basic. You hold an R1 and then you can shoot, shoot damage with it. Otherwise, you can't really do much with it, I think. You can in the air without holding out anything. It's kind of bizarre. I think on easy automatic you can without targeting enemy. I don't know why. But shooting doesn't really get you star points, at least with Ebony and Ivory, your default handguns. It does maintain your radio, so if you need to like avoid an enemy close in on one, it, it'll... I was a little slow, so that's why I didn't really maintain it. Oh god, get off! What they're doing there is they're trying to dangle me on some puppet strings or something. That's probably the most annoying attack they'll do. There are... It's not really much to worry about. Unless you're on a higher difficulty. Or there's a bunch of other enemies. Oh, I guess it doesn't really maintain your rating. I thought it did. Always like this, I'm gonna just point out, enemies just seem to like infinitely respawn. They don't, but they do respawn a lot. And it can be really, really freaking annoying when you just wanna get through to, you know, complete the level. But I did want all those orbs though for something in a little bit. You'll see what I mean, don't worry. And we get Alistair, which, of course, like every other weapon Dante has in this game, has to impale him. That's a recurring theme in this series, and Devil May Cry 2 didn't keep it. Because the developers really don't understand what made Devil May Cry, Devil May Cry, when they were making that game. But Devil May Cry 3, they had it, though. Includes his paintings. Not much, but Alistair. There's no reason to go back to Forest Edge. Alistair is stronger, it's faster. I think it has more range, and it just... Oh, I'm a little short. But anyway, there's a blue orb here. Only one in this mission. We're not gonna find the others. Man, I wanted to have... I wanted to buy something here. But I guess I'll show off this power menu anyway. We can buy items, double star, which will recover double trigger. I'll explain that in a bit too. Battle star, which we actually already have in our inventory. You start off the game with one. Holy water, screen nuke. Untouchable. Very self-explanatory, makes you invincible, but also makes you into a double trigger. Blue orb, which is an entire blue orb, not just a shard of one. You do need these in order to completely fill your life gauge, keep that in mind. 
purple orb. Double trigger again. I'm gonna explain that yellow orb. I explained already because we found one in the beginning. I don't recommend yellow orbs or violet stars damage until the end game because the end game is just ridiculous. Alistair, I want to buy Stinger because of how useful it is. Crown Trip. Uh, not that useful. I've seen some good uses in it. I don't like it myself. Air Hike, a double jump, not much to it. Air Raid, Devil Trigger only ability. Vortex, also Devil Trigger only. Level 1 means that you can upgrade the ability twice. So, I'm gonna show off Alistair real quick, actually. Because we got some more enemies again. Because this hallway infinitely spawns. But look at how quick it dealt that enemy. And that one. So much stronger than, uh, than Force Edge. Force Edge does play a key role later on. Kind of. There's really no point to going back to it. Because it's just not that useful anymore. Believe it or not, in other games it is actually pretty badass in its own right. Don't ask me how that works. In Devil May Cry 3, I mean, because that's a prequel game, so how is it stronger in the prequel, but useless in the other games? And I'm just gonna avoid the enemies now, because they're not gonna stop spawning. There's no point in finding them. I just really want enough to get experience and, you know, show off every fight, I guess. Oh, I could have come in here. Never mind. In fact, there's one other reason we came in here. Yeah, Dot doesn't care because he's stylish, man. He has attitude, like Son of the Hedgehog. Shotgun. I think in Dobin Card 1, the shotgun's really at its best. Other games, other weapons just start to eclipse it. Not to say it's bad or anything. But also, this is our main, well, our menu. You can see Rusty Keys. Vital Star, the one I mentioned before, we already started with one. It doesn't give you all health, at least um, when you have full health, but it almost does. This is how we suck with Devil Arms. Again, no reason to go back to Force Edge. Because even if I did, not only I would not keep the abilities I have from Alistair. They're only for Alistair. We have handguns. So you equip weapons. You're also noticing how the resolution is not consistent with the game. Not just here, but in cutscenes. That's probably the worst thing about some about this port. The resolution is ridiculously inconsistent, and there are framing problems which I think are consistent across Devil May Cry 3 as well. Not so much the sequel, I think. It's weird. Listen to that. That sounds like something powerful as shit. And believe me, it is. I think the effect actually is taken direct from other Resident Evil games. <laughs> Dot doesn't care. Which, you know, isn't surprising, because again, this was going to be Resident Evil 4, so of course we're going to use a few assets. Supreme knockback and everything. And that was a uh, stinger right there, this attack. It's got good speed, it's got good power, the upgrade gives it more range, so it's got utility. And again, more power. I think the speed is also increased. Stinger is a classic attack, and I'm just gonna ignore it for now. There's no reason to continue, I just wanna show off Shotgun and Stinger. We have a required fight here. The only thing about the Shotgun is, unlike Ebony and Ivory, it's not nearly as good with uh, juggling. You really just use for the power and the... Oh, the enemy had a Shotgun of its own. And it destroyed its allies. But you used shotgun just for its power and the the spread. Use ebony and ivory for the for the range. Because you know the shotgun can't really do that much damage across the distances. So many enemies, so little time. They just don't stand for the might of Alistair, they really don't. They will learn, don't worry.
Nice thing about Stinger though is that it pretty much links into any combo at the end on the ground. Like if you're just doing one strike, you can do that. Two strikes, you can do that instead of the ending slash. What are you doing up there? Damn it. Ah, uh, platform Resident Evil camera angles. They really don't work. If you stinger against a ledge, you can also do a long jump. Some ledges automatically do that. A few don't, like that one I think would. I don't think I need to fight those enemies, actually. Okay then. Oh. We'll just come back to that later. Okay, these enemies I need to defy. I was thinking this one. Ah, Alice are so good. The cutscene of Alice are actually only plays in a new game, because you know you're already gonna have it, so of course it's not gonna flip. Ooh! That was bad, I got double teamed. I'm getting hit a lot. It's only the beginning of the game because I don't take the beginning game that seriously. Let's see. That. That's basically a hint that you're supposed to use triangle. Well, attack it, basically. Um, that thing up there, we're gonna have to come back for it. That, I think, was an invitation, I think. A lot of sound effects directly taken from Resident Evil. <laughs> back in the library. We've come full circle. Oh. Oh, that explains the painting. These are a thing called scissor hands or whatever. What I just did there, killing it instantly, that's called a critical hit. I think it's critical point. I think it is where you have to stun an enemy, usually reveal their weak point or something. Like with these, if I hit them with uh, Alistair, they would die instantly depending on where I hit them. Like, there I got it right. It's hard to do relatively consistently, though. But when you do it right, it's pretty useful. Most enemies have it, not all of them. Like, the basic puppets, of course, are not going to have it, because we really need them any easier. Other games don't actually do that. It's kind of a shame. I think it's nice. Spiders! Why is it always spiders? Get okay then. Use a step of judgment. And that's the mission. Took a pretty long there, probably should not have. What's my rating? Probably C again. Yeah, typical. Again, I do not understand how this rating system works. Believe me, I have done far better. I think it's just because I'm taking so long to explain things to get everything. We've got a pretty big mission coming up ahead, actually. So let's get started. Next mission. This mission's actually really straightforward from description alone. Just overcome the trial and that's it. There's quite a number of things to do here though. Besides the trial, a few blue orbs, 
and two recurring features. We can also do something ominous and big is gonna happen with that and music. Although I love how everything's thriving like an organ, honestly. <laughs> because an organ is playing in the background. It's weird, but whatever. And in case you didn't know, Malay Island, or Mallet as it should be called, because that's how it's spelled, Mal like Mallet. Because pronunciations are weird but anyway. Malay Island is basically in the middle of nowhere, for some reason. There's more to the mystery about it, but I don't know. And Hermes, haunting me still, even though this is not God of War 3. I just head back, I guess. That's probably the whole. That was either Hermes trolling or Alistair having a fit. And Dante can't swim here for some reason, and and he loses health down here for some reason. Just shock him these things in the face. And they'll die pretty much instantly if not two hits. You get a green or a back, so that's nice. Now we're actually gonna wanna go back to that circle. You could platform or just fall in and deal with the enemies. I don't know which one's worse. Probably the platform, because again, it's can't Resident Evil Camera goes and platforming that where your character's not get retain his momentum for some reason. That's something I never liked about Dummy Cry platforming. You don't carry your momentum. At least I don't think you do. And yeah, you do that every time you fall in. It's really stupid in my opinion. But uh, whatever, we got our blue orb. There's actually a second one right nearby. And there's gonna be a third one as well. And I think I can get back. Yes! Oh, no, I didn't. <laughs> now I did. <laughs> that would've been fucking awful. For the very least, other games fix their platforming. At least because you have a better camera. We get these red orbs and. Blue orb. Very nice. Second health bar extension. This is actually for something coming up right here. At least the line was appeased, that's nice. And this is our first boss, Phantom. He has a hard skeleton, well, armor rather, whatever. So what we're gonna do is hit him in the center, in his face, or on his, his stinger. He has that fireball attack, that attack where we just try to swipe at you. Or just double hit. Oof. It doesn't do that much damage, so you can also... 
Werewolf first. Don't get hit by that. Um, don't get hit by his jumping attack. He has that fireball. He has the swings. He has the jump, which is probably his most devastating attack. Fireball you can actually don't collect. But that state where Dot was uh, electrified, that's Devil Trigger. It's a super state where you have increased damage, resistant to knockback, uh, and you get regenerating help, and you have, you're have faster as well. It varies per weapon, though. You get another Devil Arm, but Force Edge does not have a Devil Trigger of its own. Hit the Stinger, by the way, that's its weak point. It's kind of hard to do, but I think it enters a weak state where you'll do more damage. Like, I think his, uh, his orange pulsates into a darker color, and that means he's weak. Like, see there? I just hit, and I did a lot of damage as I got hit again. He has his fire pillar attack, which I think increases in speed if he's weak on health. That's pretty much it. He's in his weak state now, so... Takes more damage, and that's the whole fight. At least I think he takes more damage. I'm not too sure on that. Oh, we got we got full double trigger back. Awesome. Now that is the full mission, but we can also go here and do something else. This mission introduces secret missions. Unlike other games in the series, a secret mission is specific only to a mission. Like, this one, you can only do a mission for You can't do a mission for or any other ones. It's, again, real stupid. But whatever. And we also... Oh, I didn't get full double trigger. We also deal with fucking water again. This is a pretty tricky mission, though. I cannot do it consistently. It's the water and the fact this thing just takes its time getting down here. Das, it's so hard to do consistently. Like I am not the only crime master. I will admit to that. Oh, uh, that that should have been easier. That's pretty fucking hard, in my opinion. I'm gonna cut back to when I actually fucking succeed, cause that mission. Fuck it, sometimes. A lot of secret missions in this game are really annoying, in my opinion, and just kind of bullshit at times. And also, the Sin Scissors doesn't even give you health back, but whatever. Give me a bit and I'll be back. Finally! God, that was annoying. Alright, you get the extra orbs and that blue orb. There we go. That is a real pain in the ass. There's one more that's kind of BS, but it's BS in a different way. Oh god, I have to go through that again, don't I? Can I make it through another route of platform Resident Evil camera angle? No, I cannot. Oh, looks like it actually overrode the, the thing. Huh, I'm surprised Devil Trigger actually overrode that. I didn't think it would. You learn something new every day. That's it, that's this. That's it, that's pretty much the whole mission. There's not much else to it. I mean, hell, that's. There's nothing else to it. Just go through this door and you're done. I'm hoping you guys don't laugh at how long this fucking took, because that's. Oh, 13 minutes. I thought it'd be longer. 719 orbs, though. Let's watch that get a really stupid rank. Hey, that's pretty nice. That's probably because of the massive amount of orbs I got. I think a little less time and I probably would have had a S rank. But that's pretty nice. I mean, at least I got some a good amount of orbs from that. I'll take that. But again, that secret mission will not be there if you come back after this mission. It's also only there after you beat Phantom. Keep that in mind.